Hey guys, uh, just going through uh, this year's mid year exam paper. Um, so, uh, let's uh, just dive straight in to paper 1. Okay, uh, out of the 20 questions, uh, surprisingly, the first two questions are actually one of the worst done. Um, okay, first question, let's look through it. Which one does not? you got to read the question properly. Show a physical quantity. Physical quantity, as we have learned before, consists of both things, magnitude and unit. So, most of you chose this one, okay? So like this one has got a magnitude. Actually, there's a days here. The days here is simply the unit, okay? So it can be days, it can be hours, seconds, and so on. So all this got a magnitude unit, magnitude unit, 25 and kilograms. So this leaves us with only the answer D, okay? All right, part two. Uh, question two, also not very well done. Which one best represents diameter of the earth? Okay, it's actually megameters because the diameter will probably be 12.2 times 10 to the power of 6 meters, which is 12,200 kilometers or 10 times 3, 10 to the power of 3. So it makes more sense to be in the thousands of kilometers, right? Rather than to be in the millions of kilometers. Okay, next one. So the answer is a C, right? So which one is a, which row is a correct scalar vector pair? Okay, in this case, okay, you can see this one is vector, so no, nope. scalar, vector, so answer will be B for this case, alright? Next one, question 4, how do we read this? This is 5, 5.5, 6, 6.5, 7, 7.5, so it's 7.5 plus, the number that intersects is 0 0.44, so 0 0.44, so the answer is 7.5 plus 0 0.44 gives us, 7.94 so answer B again okay going on to the next question okay correct definition of velocity this one just refers to definition now huh? okay so just pretty straightforward answer is change of displacement per unit time uh, many of you actually chose distance per unit time this will be speed okay and this is acceleration all right so answer in this case will be B uh, so first thing, which best describes the movement? First thing you see in the graph, you got to see distance time graph. So what do you tell in the distance time graph? Two things. Okay, first thing, acceler uh, gradient gives me the speed. So highest gradient, lower gradient. In other words, higher uniform speed to lower uniform speed. Okay, but question A, okay, in this case, right? Why uniform? Because gradient is the same. Okay, over here, at least for the first part, it's the same, it's constant, the second part is also constant here. So that's why it's uniform, right? Okay, question 7. Okay, which correctly describes the motion of the car? Motion of the car for A, B, and C, D. So A, B, you can see over here. Ah, first thing, before that, speed, time graph, two things you can tell. First thing, gradient gives me acceleration and Area under the graph gives you distance. So in this case, I'm interested in this. The gradient here, increasing gradient, so must be increasing acceleration, right? So increasing acceleration, only A or B is, is uh, able to. So this one is a deceleration. Both are deceleration, correct. But what can you say about the gradient? Increasing or decreasing? So it's becoming more gentle, okay? Steep to gentle, so decreasing, so must be decreasing. So 7 will be B, okay? Alright, let's look at number 8. So 8, approximate speed of rock after 3 seconds. So this one, 1 second, that will be 10 meters per second. So 3 seconds will be 30 meters per second. So that's for C. Question 9, uh, gravitational force, basically the weight that will be going down. The normal reaction on the object will be going upward. So one is down, one is up. So answer for question 9 is D. Negative effect of friction that we want to reduce. Ah, this one uh, did the one of the best questions. Almost everybody got this right for D. Okay, that's wear and tear in moving parts. Okay. Question 11. Amount of substance in the body. This is uh, uh, based on definition for B. That's mass. Inertia is only related to mass, so I don't even care about the rest. So just look at highest mass. Answer D. Okay, gravitational field is basically a region where mass experiences a force. This is 
your definition, okay? 14, okay, so the formula to use here is W, M, so W equals MG, so W is 28 equals to 7G, now it's G equals to 4 meter per second square, or 4 newtons per kg. They're both the same units, right? The only one that's 4 is this, so it gives us mercury. Mercury gives me this, okay? So answer D, okay? Um, question 15. Uh, satellite returns to Earth. What can be said about mass? Mass will always be the same, but weight changes. So weight doesn't remain the same. Both cannot because mass cannot remain the same. Mass must remain the same and weight increases because it enters Earth, right? So answer C. Weight cannot remain the same. So this also cannot. So answer C. Okay. What about this? This is the only the only one that you find out what does it mean to be uh, which pair of force F and distance X result in similar moment. That means this times this must be equal to this times this. Okay, so the answer in this case will be A because 100 times 0 0.5 is 20. 500 times, oh sorry, 100 0 0.5 is 50. 500 times 0 0.1 is also 50. So answer A. Okay. Which one causes it to be horizontal equilibrium? Oh, okay, this one, most of you, this is uh, again another question that not many of you got correct. Okay, will not be, okay. So in this case, if I have this, this one gives me and clockwise, anti-clockwise. So clockwise, anti-clockwise, this one's also anti-clockwise. But you see, this half the distance times 2 times the force is equals to 2, the, two times the distance times the same amount of force, so it's the same, right? So this thing here, this moment, the moment caused by this force is the same as the moment caused by this force. So balance out. But what about this? Doesn't matter because there's no moment because this force acting through the pivot cause gives it zero moments. Okay, what about this one here? When the answer for the D will be, if let's say I have something here, this will be similar to this, right? It's just a a reflection because I have two times the force two force times one moment is equal to one force times two distance all right two force times half a distance is equals to uh, full distance times one force okay let's say I give it a number each okay this is 0 0.5 this is 1 so what is this 1 times 0 0.5 plus 1 times 0 0.5 is it equal to this 1 times 1, okay, so this is 0 0.5 times 0, point, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, so this one will be in equilibrium, so this is the only one that's not, right, because this two will be the same, okay, so this one will cause it to uh, be out of uh, balance, okay, alright, question 18, most stable, that means lowest, Center of gravity and largest base area. Okay, 18B. 19, this one must be electrical energy. Y. Okay, Y and Z. Z has small, this is this a speaker, so this 750Z must be sound. Cannot be keep giving off heat. If it gives off more heat than sound, that means it's a heater. It's more a heater than a speaker, right? So thermal energy Y is just a byproduct of it. So answer B in this case, okay? Last question for paper one will be a rock falls this from a height of 20 meters, GPE and KE initially 100 and 0. What's the likely? So, likely GPE and KE. So, if I have a rock falling at a height, so if GPE is equal to 100 joules, if it's not moving, KE equals 0 joules, by the time it goes down over here. What's the GPE? GPE got to be 0 joules because you can see there is a certain distance here but over here just before it hits the ground no distance so this one based on MGH sorry about that MGH if H is 0 this will be 0 and KE will be a conversion of energy 100 joules so 0 100 that leaves us with answer B but in real life this one will be slightly less because some energy is lost 
in the meantime okay all right hope you enjoyed that video on paper one all right